Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let's wait for one more minute uh, before we can start. Uh, let's uh, give a chance to other people to join. Uh, so we'll start in one minute. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of uh, North America Institute of Yangam Yoga, I welcome you all uh, to this uh, session, which is the sixth session in the series that we started a few weeks back. Um, my name is Amit Talekar. Um, so there is a small announcement. Uh, Vijayji will be a little bit late today. Um, he will be joining at 10.45. Um, so we have uh, basically changed the agenda a bit. Um, we were used to do meditation and pranayam breathing exercise towards the end that we'll do uh, in the front today. So we'll start with the breathing, breathing exercise, meditation, and then uh, Vijay Ji will join us around 10.45. Uh, there is another session going on uh, for the Bal Satsang or for the kids. So that session is organized by kids only. So they are presenting, uh, doing the meditation and, and basically doing the, all the uh, session handling by kids uh, themselves. So Vijay Ji is just, uh, you know, going to join them for first few minutes to encourage them um, and, and deliver a message. So he'll be joining around 10.45. Um, so today um, we have a new instructor to do the breathing exercises in the beginning. Um, so Yogesh Ji. Um, so uh, Yogesh Ji is uh, 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 following Vyengam Yoga from past uh, five, more than five years now. He's been instructor for Vyengam Yoga. Um, he's based in uh, North Carolina. So let me welcome you, uh, uh, Yogesh Ji. Um, please uh, 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 help us uh, on the breathing uh, or the meditation. Over to you, Yogesh Ji. Thank you so much, Amit Ji. Good morning and Jai Satgurudev, everyone. As Amiji has mentioned, we have, uh, have changed the agenda a little bit. We just changed the sequence basically. So we will begin with uh, pranayam and then we will perform meditation. And then in the regular session will continue after that. So to start with the breathing exercise, I would request everyone to uh, sit in comfortable posture. Back is straight, neck is straight, and the hands are resting on your knees with in Kiana Mudra position. We'll keep our eyes closed. And for first few seconds, we will focus on our breath. Let the breathing continues gently. No breath should go unnoticed. Gentle breathe in and breathe out.
let's keep all our thoughts behind for next one hour there is a strong relation between our breath and our mind so performing breathing exercise before meditation increase the benefit of meditation drastically continue to focus on your breath while everyone is focusing on breath allow for my prayers at the holy feet of satguru dev bar bar vandana karu satguru dev hama यहा सब ठा महिमा परम शरण शरण मै शरण हूँ हे गुरु बन छो मोह बारो हे गुरो यह सो बार निहो कंटिन्यू टू फोकस ऑन योर ब्रेथ now let's move on to the next first breathing exercise that is bhastrika pranayam so for bhastrika pranayam we'll be keeping our eyes close we'll keep our mouth close we'll take a deep breath in and then we will breathe out completely we will continue to sit straight neck is straight hands resting on our knees and every time you take a deep breath in you make sure it is gentle there is no rush no jerk and you take a deep breath and when you are breathing out you completely breathe out so let's begin take a deep breath in breathe in breathe out completely breathe out breathe in 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 breathe out, 
ब्रीद आउट वन मोर टाइम ब्रीथ इन ब्रीद आउट रिलैक्स कीप योर आईज क्लोज बैक स्ट्रेट नेक स्ट्रेट continue to focus on your breath basrika pranayam is very useful in increasing our oxygen level brain is the organ that consume the oxygen the most in our body it consume 20% of our oxygen and therefore when we perform pranayam it help us to improve the efficiency of our brain improve our memory keep us young in terms of memory decision making it reduces the tension and it helps to calm down our mind basrika pranayam also helps in the upper respiratory system continue to focus on your breath eyes close now let's move on to next breathing exercise that is brahmari pranayam So in this pranayam, we'll again sitting straight, neck straight. We'll close our ears with our thumbs, and then the eyes will be closed, and we'll rest our four fingers on our eyes gently. Do not press your eyes. let them rest on your close eye gently do not press your ears as well just close the ears enough so when you take a deep breath in and making humming sound when you are breathing out you will be able to hear your own humming sound in your head so that's where you will be focusing all your attention so those who want to take a look at when i do once and then we all can do it together so if you guys want to take a look here i will demonstrate once ears are closed with thumbs eyes are closed and the rest of the fingers resting on our close eyes i'm taking a deep breath in and when breathing out i will be making humming sound like honey bee so the humming sound will be coming from your throat your mouth will still be remain close and your focus will be on this humming sound we all will be practicing it five times everybody can do at his own pace no rush do not breathe in with a jerk gentle deep breath in and when you are breathing out make the humming sound so let's give it a try we'll be doing this practice five times 
Once you are done with five times, keep your hands back on your knees in Gyan Mudra. Eyes remain closed. And try to feel the vibrations generated from the humming sound. Brahmari Pranayam is very beneficial to reduce the tension. It is a good activity to subdue your anger, to distress yourself. So it is very useful if you want to do it after the office hours, it will completely change the atmosphere. It increase your energy level. All right, now let's move on. We'll go straight to Gayatri Mantra and we'll do five minutes of meditation. Keep the eyes closed. And if you know Gayatri Mantra, you can chant with me. Otherwise, you can focus on the sound. We'll be chanting Gayatri Mantra for five times and then we'll do the five minutes of meditation. Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yonaha Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yonaha Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam 
भर्गो देवस्य धीमहि धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओ भूर्भुव स्व तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्यधीमहि धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओ भूर्भुव स्व तत्सुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो देवस्यधीमहि धियो यो न प्रचोदया नाउ वी विल परफॉर्म फाइव मिनट्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन वंस द फाइव मिनट्स आर डन आई विल इन्फॉर्म यू
one more minute. Now let's close the eyes, rub your palms together, make them a bit warm and gently massage your eyes and your face. And then slowly you open your eyes. Thank you so much, Jay Sadhguru. I will hand it over back to Vijay Ji. Thank you, Yogesh Ji, for very wonderful practice session. Dear friends, what you witnessed today in these half an hour is what we do on daily basis every 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So if you want to really continue growing in the practice of meditation, you can get the equal benefit of the practice by the volunteering service of our Navy Sevaks who are giving their valuable time every morning and every evening for half an hour. That includes 15 minutes of breathing practice and 15 minutes of chanting and meditation practice. You won't believe it happens every day all seven days a week, including Saturday, Sunday. Exactly same time and same link. We have a WhatsApp group called Daily Meditation that was filled. So we have another WhatsApp group, group called Daily Meditation 2. And there are folks who are getting the benefit of these daily services. Today, we are going to touch on our final lesson in this series and of course this is not the end of our interaction but in this series this is the final lesson where we would like to understand a bit more spiritually about why eventually controlling mind is related to the practice of dhyan and samadhi why the controlling mind is not going to be completely possible without implementing dhyan and samadhi in our life. So in this final lesson today, we have already practiced our pranayama and meditation. So we'll give more time in interaction with each other and also understanding a bit about dhyan and samadhi. Why dhyan and samadhi? Before we understand what is dhyan and samadhi, let's say it's a jargon for you right now. But let us understand why do we need to look beyond what we have learned so far. The restlessness of the mind is caused by these three following reasons. If you have any kind of physical discomfort, you would not be able to have the rest, the peace of mind, because the pain will trouble you, the discomfort will trouble you. The, the physic is fine, there's no physical illness, but there is mental illness. Either we are suffering with the greed, the lust, the anger, 
ego and what not you know the jealousy there are things that impact our mind very badly so we are in the mental discomfort somebody abused us and that hurted our ego and we are restless we are angry at something we are restless so there are something in our life which is you know causing the mental unrest in us so the mind will it's it's difficult to keep mind in control if you do not resolve the problem of the physical and the mental discomfort so asana pranayama and dharana practice which is also supported by certain you know the attributes that we learned in initial sessions supported by the attribute of patience supported by the attribute of forgiveness supported by the attribute of no anger supported by the attribute of truth supported by attribute of wisdom you know those those 10 righteous qualities they are essential for us to imbibe in our life otherwise there will always be one or the other ways that your mind will be troubled so those righteous qualities are not just to become a good human being but those righteous qualities are essential for us to remain unaffected by any rise and fall in our life so asana pranayama and dharana they would help in the physical and mental unrest but there is deep within a spiritual unrest deep within us there is a spiritual unrest and that spiritual unrest can only be solved when you enter into the domain of dhyan and samadhi if we do not have the answer to that spiritual unrest within then no matter how beautiful human being you become no matter how prosperous you are no matter whatever is there in your life but that deep within you will feel a sense of emptiness a sense of dissatisfaction a sense of lack of joy as if you will you you are incomplete without something something that you do not know what is something and that is what is the spiritual unrest the spiritual unrest is dissatisfaction in the soul constant seeking of everlasting happiness absolutely nothing in this physical world would seem to be ever satisfying you know because of that there is a unrest within but do we know what are we seeking what are we seeking in life if you say that i am seeking the settlement of my kids so be it there was a person in bangalore i didn't know he was 85 years old then i called him that i am organizing one meditation workshop in bihar bhavan he said uh, bete i am happy that at such a tender age you are organizing it because it was a thing in um, i think 15 years ago so long ago when i was active in bangalore he said i am very happy that at such a tender age you have started participating in in something very fruitful very useful but i cannot come i highly request you to come and visit me personally and when i went there at his door he opened the door and i realized oh my god he was just trembling um uh, you know his hands were trembling legs trembling he was with the support of the stick and he started telling me that oh come come in vijay 
you know, I have my one son who is in Australia. I have another son who is in Germany and they are well settled. And they love me a lot. I have grandsons from both of them. You know, in fact, both of my sons have gifted me one bungalow. So I have two bungalow in Bangalore. In Bangalore, I have two buildings on my name. That was a token of love from my kids. I have everything. And then he started crying. I was just listening. I didn't utter a single word till then. I was just listening. He had everything. But he said, I have everything, but I have no control on my mind. Vijay, I have everything, but my mind is very restless. I'm not able to sleep. One or the other, you know, weird thoughts will just keep me awake. I just do not know what is the solution for it. Then he showed me the Almira, which was filled with all the spiritual books, starting from Bible, Quran, to Bhagavad Gita, to Vedas, to Upanishads. He said, I have read everything, Vijay. I have read everything from this Almira. Almira. Only one conclusion that I got was, I did not meditate when I was supposed to meditate. I am too late in bringing my mind in my control. Now it is too late. I have so many reasons to be restless now. Manage my mind well. And now it is too late. Even though I knew that I should have been meditating every day. When I try to sit for meditation, my body does not permit it. I have too much of problem in the body. I cannot even sit for meditation. So what are we seeking? Why is our mind so restless? Is it because our kids have not settled? Is it because we have not earned enough? No, none of these, none of these. We are restless because we have no answer. What is something that will make me ever happy? We go for one thing and then we realize this is not enough. Then we go for next, we go for next and it continues. So is there anything that can give everlasting happiness? Every sensory pleasures have happiness, no doubt about it, but they are so limited, so tiny, so temporary. While we are consuming that subject, we feel little happy. But then we get used to it or when we are done with it, we are back to the square zero, just zero. Soul is not satisfied with the limited happiness that we get out of sensory subjects. Soul is seeking the abundance of happiness, the sea of happiness, the ocean of happiness as it was there in the ocean of happiness before. The soul knows where I was before. It is just that now I am caught into this mortal land where everything is limited. Everything gives me only limited happiness. So soul realizes that from within because soul has seen the abundance of joy also. So where is that abundance of joy? in this physical world, nowhere. Soul has not seen that ocean of happiness in this physical world because soul did not belong to this physical world. You and me have come to the bondage in this mortal land from the land of immortality. You and me have fallen into this trap of Maya from where? From the zone of bliss. We were in union with Almighty. And the Almighty has the property of bliss. He is called Satchidanan. 
but do we know where is that zone where is that test of bliss that sachidanand has is it in just chanting mantra is it just in remembering god in our mind of course not because in all those efforts we are again limited only to the the ability of our senses and mind and within the ability of our senses and mind lies only the physical world only the physical world you cannot connect to the bliss of almighty the real bliss of almighty the abundance of the bliss of almighty through your senses no matter how hard you imagine about the lord no matter how lovely you feel from within sitting in front of god but all those that you feel is nothing but just the act of your mind and indriyas and the experience of almighty is not within the act of mind and indriyas so what is dhyan and samadhi and this is why this is why because within the limits of indriyas and mind lies only the physical world only the limited happiness and this is why we need to know something that will take us beyond the limits of our sens sensory organs have you ever imagine that you sitting at one place is able to see something very remote something which is beyond the reach of your eyes what lies the other side of the sky even the scientist have failed to yet discover that what is something beyond creation where is the boundary of creation but do we think that the rishis have failed to realize that no rishis have already gone beyond creation how did they do that they raised their consciousness they made their consciousness travel beyond boundaries consciousness cannot be bound to the andric limits whatever your eyes can see your consciousness can see beyond that whatever your ear can hear your consciousness can experience the divine sound which is beyond ears so your consciousness have all the power your consciousness is called panchodan as well meaning it has the ability to experience all the five subjects you do not need to necessarily be dependent on your five sensory organs and that is why our master sadguru sadapal dev ji maharaj he demonstrated that ability what is a true yogi he sat in gyan mudra and he came out of his body and spoke from the sky for about 15 minutes he said bin pag gamman without leg a yogi can walk kar binu karma without hand a yogi can act without ear the yogi can hear without tongue a yogi can test and without skin yogi can feel the touch a yogi has hold of the conscious power through which they can experience something that we have not yet experienced in our daily life a yogi can experience the supreme consciousness and just like the heat is the property of fire 
the moment yogi experiences the supreme consciousness they experience the abundance of bliss which is inherent in the supreme consciousness so all we needed to know is the technique by which we can use our consciousness raise our consciousness and take it to the abode of supreme consciousness and this is where the process of dhyan and samadhi come into picture so what is dhyan dhyan is a process a journey of consciousness from maya to the ocean of happiness so dhyan is your process by which you are reversing the flow of your consciousness our guru said yog yog sab koi kahe yog na jana ko ardh dhar uradh chale yog kaha viso yog kahta hai jod ko yog kahta hai sandhi yog rahasya upay mein jeev brahma ki sandhi so yog in in true sense is the reversal of our consciousness right now our consciousness is always getting lost into the subject outside we are engaged only with the external subject when we know the art of reversing this consciousness and to take it inside it is only then we connect to the supreme consciousness inside so this process of reversing the consciousness is what is called dhyan and that is what is called the practice of yog so what is yog in reality yog in reality is something that happens by the process of dhyan yog and dhyan cannot be se segregated yoga and dhyan can be se segregated can be separated yoga and dhyan are not the same but yog and dhyan are one and the same through dhyan you are doing the practice of yoga but when is the 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 ultimate state of yoga you have started making a journey from outside to inside through the process of dhyan and it is not you who have started making the journey but it is that divine sadguru who have used his magnetic power to take your consciousness from outside to inside can you take your consciousness yourself from outside to inside you think yes i can i can just close my eyes and then try to feel my breath and different kind of sounds which happens inside if you think that is what is about taking the consciousness inside well there is a limit what we are taking our consciousness inside to is within the limits of our sensory organs only so you are able to connect to only those sounds which your ear can hear do you think when you close your eyes you have stopped using your ear no you are still bound to your sensory organs so that is not how the dhyan happens dhyan is a process where you go beyond your sensory organs who can take us beyond sensory organs the one who is capable the one who is sadguru so dhyan and samadhi happens in the domain of consciousness dhyan is a journey to the ocean of happiness samadhi is about reaching that happiness and getting absorbed into it so when you so dhyan results into samadhi samadhi is not something that you practice but dhyan will result into samadhi where you will get absorbed while living in the body you will be living in the body but you will be connected with the bliss you will be in the state of samadhi so getting absorbed into the everlasting ocean of happiness is samadhi and dhyan and samadhi happens in the realm of consciousness 
beyond our indriyas. Human life is a rare opportunity for that. That is possible only in the human life. Five sensory organs have been gifted to us to experience physical subjects, but that does not make us special because the other species also can experience those five subjects. What makes us special is the secret 10th door which has been gifted only to the human body. We have nine doors in our body that we have been using every day. We have been using our two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, one mouth, and two organs of excretion for urine and poop. So you have these 10, you have these nine doors in the body that we have always been using. But what we have not known yet is about our secret 10th door. The secret 10th door, which is closed by Kundalini. And only when that door opens, then your consciousness is set free from the limits of Indriyas. So what is the opportunity in a human life? Is it about experiencing the external world? No, it is about reaching to the entities which are beyond our Indriyas. That opportunity is only in the human body. We must put an effort to, ex to, to basically leverage that opportunity. We must know how to awaken the Kundalini which power is going to help us awaken our kundalini human life is the opportunity to end the karmic cycle to end the cycle of life and death to end the cycle of birth and rebirth the opportunity is only in the human life and the soul will never ever feel complete and satisfied unless it really explore these opportunities. So my dear friends, this opens up a new dimension in your life about who you are, where you have come from, where you need to go by the end of this life. What is your destination in the human life? Hope we have got a bit or a little bit of curiosity now about knowing those technique by which your consciousness can be reversed. Maybe we are willing to now explore what makes a Sadhguru, a true Sadhguru. How do I identify who is the Sadhguru today in the human form? These are something that we need to explore first as a human being. To make the full use of human life, you need to seek Sadhguru. Durlabha Sadhguru Milanai Bhagyavan Narpa Deva Sadafal Hari Kripa so I request all of you to please feel free to ask any questions. I also wanted to make a point here that just like you have been connecting with us every Sunday 10.30 a.m., we will continue to meet at 10 30 a.m on our main bridge line our main conference if you are interested then we will share you the link of our weekly sessions that will continue to inspire you for staying right years in your life for always being awake and alert about your behavior, 
your thoughts, your actions, about your practice. To stay regular in our daily meditation practice, to stay always alert and prosperous in spiritual journey, it is important to at least give one hour of your time every week for connecting to satsang like this. Satsang is a shower that washes our mind and soul. We have been washing our body every day by taking bath. But what is more important is washing to wash our mind and soul. So when you hear things like this in satsang, your mind will be set in a state of detachment. And that state of detachment is what makes your mind at peace and at joy. The subjects outside are the reason why we feel restless. But satsang is one that provides the necessary safeguard, the shield that protects the mind and soul from the illusion. So keep joining satsang. I have uh, another series, it's called Deep Dive Spirituality. If you guys would be interested to learn more individually or maybe in a group about the other spiritual aspect of Yangam Yoga, we have a Deep Dive Spirituality session. But I would highly recommend for you to join the mainstream satsang which happens every Sunday at 10.30. You would be encouraged to exercise your learning over there by participating in quiz. So there are spiritual quizzes where the questions are asked and you are asked to log in into an app through which you can answer those questions. So it makes your participation interesting, interactive. You will remain active. You will be learning every week by participating in those quizzes and you will also be given opportunity to discuss those the the question if something is beyond your comprehension you're free to ask and understand why this answer and not that jester dudev i welcome all of you to open up if you have any question vijayji Yes, can you, yes. uh, can you please uh, clarify again what is this 10th uh, door? Uh, basically, you are talking about uh, consciousness is the 10th door. Yeah, very nice question. So, Sai, uh, in our body, as we see the other nine doors, similarly, we have a Brahmarandra. Brahmarandra is uh, around the top of our head. And that is the passage through which the soul enters into the body. It is in the Sushmana Nadi. So you know that there is a Ingla Nadi and Pingla Nadi. Similarly, there is one Sushmana Nadi. Ingla, Pingla, Sushmana meet together, you know, between the eyebrows, somewhere within, and then the sushmana goes further beyond our body through the top of our head. So sushmana is a subtle nerve which you cannot physically feel. But sushmana is like Saraswati. You know, in Triveni, the Ganga and Yamuna are visible to us. But Saraswati is hidden. Similarly, I mean, that is just the physical representation of something very divine inside our body. There is a Triveni inside our body as well. And that Saraswati is nothing but our Sushmana Nadi. And when we talk about Nadi, it simply means it's a passage through which our consciousness rises beyond our body. So at the top head, at the, at the top uh, head uh, is where the basically top of our head is where the the sushmana nari passes 
through it goes beyond little bit beyond and that end is called the 10th toe okay so that 10th door is closed by kundalini so what is kundalini doing kundalini with its hood kundalini is like serpentine entity and the hood of that serpentine entity is what is closing the door the 10th door this is why we talk about kundalini awakening why do we want to awaken kundalini because only when you awaken kundalini it leaves the way of this sushmana nadi and soul resides inside the sushmana nadi only in the region of your heart so your sushmana nadi also goes through your heart region travels through the you know the point between your eyebrows and goes to the top of your head and the soul is residing inside the sushmana nadi in the region of the heart so when you awaken your kundalini the soul is able to now raise the consciousness beyond the body through the 10th door so only when your 10th door will open your consciousness can experience by connecting to something beyond your indriyas right now your consciousness is able to perceive and experience only those subjects which are being passed by the mind so in one of the diagram where i showed you the mind is grabbing the subjects from indriya and is passing on that subject to the soul in reality it passes on the subject to the consciousness of the soul so your consciousness whichever subject it will connect to either through the mind or directly if you can connect your consciousness directly without going through these indriyas and mind if you can raise your consciousness yourself and connect to anything that you want then without your mind and indriyas you will be able to experience that as if you are experiencing with your sensory organ only the way you hear your sound the way you are able to see something through your eyes similarly just by your consciousness after you take it beyond your 10th door just by your consciousness you will be able to experience something which otherwise were not perceivable by our senses and mind and what is those what are those those are the set of conscious entities like the soul itself the soul realizes the self that's why it's called self realization atma sakshatkar atma sakshatkar the self realization is about literally experiencing the self who am i as a spirit what do i look like and feel like when you get the self realization you see the abundance of light within your soul you also see the omnipresent light in every coordinate of this creation but that light is not the light of the sun that is a divine light whether there is a darkness of the night or the brightness of the day when you are in that state where your consciousness goes beyond the body the brightness that you will experience would feel like that the sun is just like a candle light in front of that brightness the supreme light is much brighter than the daylight of the sun even in the darkness of the night you will experience that light so all those are beyond our comprehension and experience right now because we are dependent on our body and mind so this process of dhyan and samadhi is what will take us beyond these boundaries and will make us reach the amar lok 
the land of immortality from where we have fallen into this mortal land. So I hope we understand that consciousness and soul are, are two different things. When we say consciousness, our consciousness, consciousness is like the right light beam that emits from a source of light. So your consciousness is emitting out of you. And you as a spirit is the source of consciousness, your consciousness. You are always equipped with the conscious light. And the rays of that light is what is the consciousness that you are spreading and connecting to things for you to experience. So wherever your own light will fall, your own consciousness, your own conscious light, wherever it will fall, that will come to your experience. So that is where the consciousness comes into the picture. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Surya ji, in breathing exercise, is there any minimum maximum number of breaths in pranayam? Anlom bilom strika pranayam? Yes, uh, definitely based on what is the condition of your heart, your lung, you know, if you are, let's say, suffering from uh, high blood pressure, then of course you cannot do bhastrika as intensely as we do otherwise. And you cannot do it for longer time also. So when you're suffering with high blood pressure, then you should keep it mild. You cannot take uh, the forceful breathing in and out, but it should should be very, very at ease, as if you're just breathing in mildly and breathing out mildly. If you do the mild breathing in and out and keep your concentration, then you can go up to 10 minutes. If you want to do quick and forceful, then you cannot do beyond two minutes if you're suffering with the heart disease or blood pressure. For a regular uh, people who have no uh, bad health conditions, they can practice pranayam up to 20 minutes. You can uh, distribute your pranayama time among two or three breathing. Each breathing can be done minimum five minutes for the healthy people. Uh, for example, an alom vilom, you can do from five to 10 minutes. Bhastrika, you can do five minutes. If you want to do bhamri, you can do five minutes. So minimum five minute works for healthy people you can stretch it to 10 minutes also one breathing but to get the full benefit of other breathing practice you can divide your time so maybe five minute one then five minute other one five minute next one or you can take it up to 10 minutes each if you are healthy okay so rohit uh, they said is consciousness and soul the same if not what is the difference oh i think i i mentioned about it Okay, uh, Vijayji, okay, that's done. And then, uh, oh no, I'm a healthy person. Yes, if you're a healthy person, then you're good to practice breathing for 20 minutes. Uh, you can do only two breathing also 10 minutes each if you can hold on to patience. Usually, you know, uh, if you're not having enough patience, practicing the same breathing continuously for 10 minutes becomes a little, you know, um, uncomfortable for us so in that case you can do five minutes each it will be joyful for you five minutes each breathing practice and if you spend 20 minutes in the breathing especially these days when you need to boost your immunity you need to strengthen all your inner system be the digestive system be your nervous system be your, your respiratory system all the system inside is being run by your prana. So more you practice prana, this is going to improve all your inner system, as well as it is going to purify your intellect. So more you practice pranayama, your buddhi will work that much better. Okay, yeah, 30 minutes, wow, that, that's uh, commendable. That's really good. I would say that if you have only 30 minutes time, then it's better to 
divide it in like 20 minutes of breathing and 10 minutes of meditation because meditation is something which is going to really tell you if you are restful or restless. Maybe during breathing you will feel, yeah, I am very restful. But when it comes to meditation practice, the real you will come forward and will show how restless we are from inside. So to truly experience restfulness, we need to definitely practice meditation as well. Just a second, I'm getting a call. If there's any question, please write it. Okay, if that is it, then we are good. Thank you all. We'll uh, send you the link for our uh, regular weekly sessions. I would request you guys to start joining. Sai Ji has already started joining over there. So if if uh, you want to know something about it and know, uh, maybe Sai can share here. How do you feel over there? Is it like fruitful to join there too? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I'm learning something more, uh, especially about the spirituality. Uh, so far, I mean, like I attended two sessions. Uh, so so far, so good. I liked it, and I I really like that uh, question and answer, uh, like online quiz and uh, uh, if, uh, for various questions, uh, detailed explanation by given by you and some other people. So that's uh, really. Uh, Really, uh, really helping me to understand more about spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. You're all welcome to join that. We'll send you the link um, about that sessions. And once you guys start joining there and start joining the daily meditation practice every morning and evening, you will be a different person just in a couple months. All we need is just to make best use of the opportunity that Vihangam Yoga is giving you for free. Every morning, every evening, practice meditation, join our satsang and bring the transformation in your life. Thank you all. See you again next week, maybe over the main bridge line now. Thank you very much, Vijay ji. I really appreciate your all your help. Thank you. Thank you all.